What do you do with all your stuff when you downsize in retirement? That was the dilemma that was facing me and my wife when we decided to move to a house half the size three years ago. Three years ago, my wife and I decided to sell our family home that we'd lived in for the last 23 years. It just wasn't serving purpose anymore. It was far too large for just the two of us. Our 25 year old son had left home a few years before to go to college and he was now permanently residing in London. So we knew we didn't need a house that was as big as that anymore. Plus the garden was getting a bit overgrown to say the least. It was getting hard to keep on top of it. So we made the fateful decision to move from our country home to a house half the size in the city centre of York. In the process, we knew we had to declutter our stuff because there was no way that all our stuff could fit into our new home. We needed to get rid of at least 50% of it. And in the end, that's what we did. In my case, I managed to actually shift 75% of my possessions. In this video, I'll share how we did that in just four months from accepting the offer to completing on our new property. I can tell you it was an exhausting process. We really had accumulated a lot of crap in nearly 40 years of marriage. I remember moving into our first house. We had absolutely nothing. We had to beg and borrow our family. Fast forward 40 years and our house was crammed to the rafters with stuff. And so much of it was rubbish. Living in a house that's filled with too many possessions can actually be stressful. It's not good for your health. It can bring on anxiety and even depression. And if there's one thing that you need to know, it's this, that clutter can be a real thief. It steals your time, it steals your money, it steals your energy, and obviously it steals your space, and it's definitely stealing your happiness. Not just that, it's been proven that you're less productive in a cluttered environment. The idea of decluttering is hard for some people. They don't like to throw certain things away. I'm not like that, but my wife is. I can tell you we've regularly fallen out and disagreed on this topic about what can go and what can stay. I understand that some possessions can remind you of happy times. They bring back great memories but you can't keep everything when you're moving house to a property that's half the size. The sentimental possessions are the hard ones. I'll talk about how to declutter those at the end of the video. Then there's the expensive purchases. They can be even harder. Just because you've spent a few bob on something, it makes it harder to throw it away. But just like any possession, you've got to sift through and decide what to keep and what to ditch. The good news is there are fewer of them, right? And then there's received gifts, the stuff that you've been given by your children or your your parents or your friends. Maybe you don't really want them, but you don't want to appear ungrateful, but you just hate to get rid of them. It just doesn't seem right, does it? Maybe you've got a situation where the person who's giving you that thing actually looks for it when they visit your home. That was certainly the case with me, with my mother. She always gave me jumpers for birthday and Christmas. And if I wasn't wearing them when I visited her house or she visited me or we took her out for a meal, she really would give me a hard time. That's what my mother was like. I'll talk to you at the end too about what you can do with gifts because it's unfair on you not to get rid of those possessions too. Right, let's talk about the process of how to get rid of 50% of your stuff. Firstly, you need to make a plan. If you've watched any of my previous videos, you know I'm a man who likes a plan. I plan just about everything that happens in my life and I'm no different when it comes to decluttering, I can tell you. The first thing on the plan is to get a time frame to finish it. We knew we had four months. In that time, we had to shift our stuff. We had to get rid of 50%. We couldn't take it all with us. The next house we were moving to just wasn't big enough. So half of it had to go. That was not open for debate. What was open for debate and long discussion is what we were going to do with it. What were we going to ditch, donate, sell or keep? To get an idea of how long it was going to take, we decided to count the number of rooms and allocate a week to each room. And that excludes the attic and the garages, which are a special project in their own right. So we had five bedrooms plus a living room and a best room or drawing room. Yes, we really did have one of those and it only got used at Christmas. We also had a TV room, my study and kitchen. If I've got my maths right, that adds up to 10 rooms. So approximately 10 weeks and we had 16 weeks allocated to move. But remember that excludes the bathrooms, the attic and the garage. So we gave ourselves a little bit of breathing space. 
we decided to leave the attic and the garages until last. I'll talk more about that later in the video. Why did we decide to do that? Because they're complicated. They're full of a lot of junk and not everything in those garages or those attics belongs to you. A lot of the stuff might be from your kids. Ours certainly was. There was a lot of stuff in there that belonged to our now 25 year old son from his childhood. All manner of things that were important to him when he was a kid, but that he didn't seem that bothered about now. But at the end of the day, we needed to check with him to make sure it was okay to sell or donate or ditch his stuff. I'll cover more about that later in the video. Secondly, you need to get organised. Everything needs categorising as follows. Keep, sell, donate, ditch. Anything you are keeping goes back where it came from. For anything you are selling, eBay is a great resource for the declutterer. I did my research and anything that was worth more than £10 plus postage, I listed it on eBay. I sold over 400 items in just four months. It took some doing, taking all the photos, doing the post, all that sort of stuff. It was hard work, but it was well worth doing. And the proceeds were donated to my son for his living in London fund. Bigger furniture items, they went on Gumtree. Anything that was worth less than £10 and it wasn't junk, I donated to my favourite charities in my local town. And any stuff that couldn't be sold or donated, I took it to the local dump. Or as we say in the UK, the recycling centre. Thirdly, you want to start small. Starting small means you can have some quick and easy wins. Start off in a small room like a study in my case. I tackled my study first, which was only a small room, but it was full of stuff. But all of it really belonged to me. It was my decision what was kept and what went that was in that room. I could go through everything without my wife looking over my shoulder and getting into a debate about whether or not we should keep it or not. Boy, did I have some crap in those drawers in that study. I had ancient iPods, Nokia phones, umpteen chargers and cables from assorted gadgets that were no longer around. However, I'm proud that none of that stuff, apart from a few electrical cables, went to the dump. Nearly all of it found a new home on eBay. That's the way to repurpose your stuff. It might be junk to you, but it's precious to somebody else. Or maybe they're just turning it into their own junk. Another place where you can make a start on a small scale is the kitchen. Just tackling one drawer at a time. Maybe start with your kitchen utensil drawer. Tip everything out onto the countertop and start going through it one at a time. If there's something you can donate, put it in the pile for the charity shop. If you're binning it, get it ready to go out with the trash. Again, eBay came in handy here. I sold quite a few things, for example, an old Nespresso coffee machine, which was still in working order, and a bunch of Le Creuset cast iron pans, which were well in demand. Keep going until the counter is clean. Do only one drawer at a time, get it done and look at it and you'll feel good. And then if you've got the energy, keep going onto the next drawer. But you have to make a commitment to finish it. If you don't think you can finish, don't start another drawer. The last thing you want is lots of stuff lying around on your countertop to be dealt with another day. It'll just stress you out. Next, another easy place to tackle is the bathroom. Get under the sink, in the drawers, into your medicine cabinet and get rid of all those lotions, potions and sun creams that have gone well past their expiry date or are half full. You can always replace them when you get to your new home. So that's it, you've had some quick and easy wins and you're starting to get into the swing of it. Now it's time to figure out how to tackle the rest of the house. Next it's the bedrooms, which is a whole process of its own. I think the bedrooms can be a very personal place. It's up to you, it's where you keep all your clothes, they're your clothes. So you'll want to decide whether or not you're going to keep them or not. The best way of doing it I found was to empty all the drawers into the middle of the bed and then just go through it one at a time following the usual process. Keep, ditch or donate and even sell. I found that a lot of my clothes dating back to the 1990s from some pretty good brands like Hugo Boss or Ralph Lauren Polo, they were in demand on eBay, so I sold them. Anything that I didn't sell, I donated to the charity shops. And that's where donating feels really good. You're actually giving them some good items, not rubbish. If you have things that you're not using and you know other people can use them, then donate it. Get it all together in bags, put it in the back of your car and drive to the local town and give it away to the charity shops. It really feels good that you're helping a worthy cause. I can tell you now that the charity shops in my local town got to know me really well, especially the 
local children's hospice. That was the one that really resonated with me. I can't bear the thought of children who are ill suffering and I'd like to do anything I can to help. You will have your favourites and causes close to your heart. Donate whatever you can to help them out. Yeah, bedrooms are tough. They're full of a lot of things, piles of things usually, shoe boxes, that kind of stuff. But you just have to make a start and get stuck in and keep working through it. I did the stuff in my wardrobe on my own. I worked my way through my hanging clothes. If I looked at a piece and I hadn't worn it for 12 months, it had to go. As I said before, it was all good quality stuff. So there was always gonna be some home for it. I ditched 75% of my clothes using this rule. Next up is the reception rooms. Go back and finish the kitchen and then move on to the dining room if you have one. You might have a dining room cabinet. Ours was actually in the drawing room. Yes, that one again. Our best room, the one that only got used at Christmas. That's where my wife keeps all her best china and crystal glasses. You just have to make sure that you're using them all. And if you're not, donate them. Or maybe even hand them down to your kids if they want them, especially if they're family heirlooms. And by the way, your kids won't want them. Young people in their 20s are not interested in that kind of stuff. China, crystal, they look at it and go, what would I do with that? I'm 63 and I feel the same way. Ladies, please explain to me what is it about china and crystal glasses? Next up, it's living rooms. You'll run into problems there because that's where you'll encounter more sentimental items. You know the sort of thing, gifts from people photos of happy memories, favourite ornaments, paintings that you bought on that holiday, a lot of sentimental stuff. Like I said earlier, I'll cover that at the end, so keep watching. But it's basically the same process. Next, it's time to tackle the attic and garages. Now that's a project in its own right. It's a multi-week project as well. Probably allocate a bit longer than a week to tackle these. And you need to be really clear with yourself that this is the time to get rid of the junk, the stuff that's really piling up. It's going to be in the garage or the attic. You are going to have a lot of junk in there. You might even need to hire a skip or a dumpster or make a lot of runs to the local recycling centre. Be prepared for that eventuality. That's where the junk ends up. And believe me, I learned that firsthand. Attics, garages and basements are tough multi-day jobs. I find it's best to tackle them on a weekend or when the weather is good. Not just that, when you're done, you'll have to clean those areas up as well. And they're usually filthy. My garage certainly was. It needed a good blast with the hose pipe and a good clean out when we'd finished. The other consideration, which I mentioned earlier, is that's where your kids' stuff is gonna end up. Everything's gonna be in there from their early years right up to their teenage years when they maybe left home to go to college. Bikes, sports gear, that sort of stuff. We had so much stuff in there, it was unreal. Three bikes, fishing rods, cricket sets, tennis rackets, you name it, it was in there. But here's the thing, it doesn't belong to you, it belongs to them. We got permission from our son what to do with those things, but he never came anywhere near to help out. I think the thought of the family home finally going was a little bit too painful for him. That's his excuse, I guess. But hey, he benefited enormously, because anything that we sold, the proceeds went into the bank account to help him in the early years when he'd moved to London. Thanks for staying to the end. Now let's talk about those sentimental items. What what do you do with sentimental things? Well, first up, see if anybody else wants them. Maybe your kids, for example, but they probably won't. We had a few things from my parents who are no longer with us, things that we'd cleared from their houses when my mum passed away. We didn't know what to do with them, but we knew we couldn't keep them. It was a painful decision, but we decided to donate most of the things to a local charity that my mum actually volunteered at for the last five or six years of her life. So at least her things were going to a worthy cause that she supported. The thing is, with sentimental things, you do need to be intentional. Is it something that you can actually use? If not, it has to go, I'm afraid. I think it's important to keep some mementos. And for those, we each created a memento box to put things in. And I also created a memento box just for my mum and dad. So in my case, I had two memento boxes and my wife had one because her parents are still with us. The thing about sentimental items that come from your parents or even some of your early memories is that your kids might not want them now because they're still relatively young. But in another 20 or 30 years time, when they open those boxes, they'll be delighted that you kept them. I love watching the city movies from when I was a kid, which I've had digitized onto a format that I can watch on my computer. And also I've had them put onto CD to watch on a CD player. But I won't lie to you, I wasn't even remotely 
totally interested in that stuff when I was in my early 20s. But now I'm 63, I love it. I'm so glad that my mum kept all that stuff. I mean, she could quite easily have thrown it away and then I would have missed out. So bear that in mind when you're looking through those sort of things. Will your kids be glad of them in years to come? They probably will. And that brings me on to the subject of what you can do with your photographs. I know this is a big project, but you could digitise them like I did. It takes a long time, but it's well worth it. Get them digitised, get them scanned and put them on the cloud for future use. You can even share them with your kids at a later date. I'm sure they'll be delighted that you have. Maybe get a digital picture frame that displays the photos one at a time. Some people like to do that. Lastly, we're on to gifts. And this one is a hard one to tackle. But here's the thing. Don't let gifts be a burden to you. They're stuff just like anything else. You probably just have to be a bit sensitive to what the person who gave you the gift might think if they knew you were dumping them. If someone's given you a gift and you've accepted it, it's not something you have to keep forever. It's like anything else, it's got a time scale. If you keep accepting gifts from people, that's how clutter starts all over again. I haven't accepted physical presence now for well over 10 years. I've let my family and friends know that I'm only looking for experiences and I've had some great gifts off them. Sushi making classes, hot air ballooning and obviously the odd bottle of high quality whiskey that doesn't get wasted, I can assure you. That's been my strategy to make sure that I don't start accumulating clutter all over again. There you have it. Decluttering can be painful and it's hard work but gosh is it worth it in the end. Thanks for watching.